perfect. Okay. All right, I see a couple people frozen here. It may have been me. All right, we are live, and we are here today talking about makerspaces. And so really the point of us doing this was to give our teachers a way to be able to get some professional development and learning that they probably wouldn't be able to do outside of the classroom or during the day. And so what we are trying to do is come up with a way that teachers can try to get some PD on their own time. And um, it's a way for us to collaborate and talk about some awesome topics. Um, our first week, uh, Lisa was here as well. We talked about just our favorite technology tools. Um, two weeks ago, we talked about flexible learning spaces. And this week, we're talking about maker spaces. So um, we're pumped about this topic. And I think we're going to see some fun stuff happening in the classroom. And as we're going on, we might have people joining in with us throughout the time. So that would be awesome. But I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself and let everybody else introduce themselves as well. I'm Jamie Donnelly, and I am located here in Gladewater, Texas, and um, work with technology here with the folks out here, and just excited to share this with teachers and, and get this concept going out here, um, and just across the globe, really. So um, I'm Jamie Donnelly, and I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Travis if you want to introduce yourself. I'm Travis Leap. I'm a technology integrationist in the Harrisburg School District in South Dakota. Uh, we went on this journey of a makerspace about two years ago. I was at an elementary school prior to being at the middle school here and we had planned everything out and my building principal decided that he needed to go to greener pastures and so he left me and I was worried that I wasn't going to have support from administration for it but our middle school principal had heard about the things that we were about ready to try and he snatched me up and said hey would you want to take a jump over to middle school um, come on over and, and experience it here and we'll, we'll give you what you need and so um, between myself and our media specialist we kind of teamed up together and housed it in our in our media center and it's an open door policy and our kids come in and create and make kind of throughout the day based on what they need that's pretty awesome that's I can't wait to see your space that's gonna be a lot of fun um, Lisa do you, I know you're not on video but would you like to go ahead and share who you are Sure, yeah. I'm Lisa Monti. I am the technology specialist here at Waco um, Independent School District in Waco, Texas. And yes, I'm having some tech, tech, tech problems this morning, and so I'm not able to um, have video. But you do have audio, and I am here eating my lunch and paying attention and writing down everything he is saying. So I look forward to all seeing and learning more about, about it, Travis. And I'm going to go ahead and just share with anybody that wants to add in any questions or be involved in this conversation um, from viewers. I know we don't have any viewers right this moment, uh, but they may come back later on. And if you have any questions that you'd like you know, answered or have anything going on, we actually have our Q&A open. So I'm going to go ahead and screen share and just share how to do that. Um, and I'll just share my entire screen here. Okay, and um, when you are here on the events page, you're able to go and choose the play so you can start watching. And I'm going to make sure to pause this here. Oh, there's Travis. And then you can see you're able to ask questions right here. So any questions that you ask, we will see those things. We will try to address them and um, just audibly will answer them so that you can ask those questions and we can um, make sure that everybody's invited into this conversation. So um, I'm going to stop screen sharing here, but I just wanted you guys to be aware that that is a tool available to you to be a part of this conversation. Um, one other thing that, you know what, I probably should screen share on this part. <laughs> Again, let me just switch over one more time. Um, but we have um, actually Carrie Espen who has started this. Um, she wasn't able to be with us today. But we have a community that we're all kind of putting in our information to and everything that we're doing. So again, this is our third time of Connected Convos. But you're able to join in the community and be a part of the learning with us. And so if you go to your Google Plus and you go into Communities, it is called Connected Convos. You'll want to request access to get in. And here you'll find all of the resources. So last, uh, excuse me, two weeks ago, our last time together, um, we had a flexible learning, flex, flexible seating and learning spaces. And so there are some information that you can gather here, some really cool things that were made. And when we're done, we follow up 
actually Carrie has been putting some things together and um, sharing it here so that you guys can have access to that information as well. I've been sending it out on tweets as well, but just so there's one place with all of the information, if you wanted to request to become um, part of this community and seeing the conversations happening and joining in when it works for you, that would be wonderful for you guys to be there. All right, I'm ready to stop, and I see that we have some friends here joining us, and I'll let them introduce themselves, although they're not on video, but we have Jessica Torres, I believe, is her last name. Jessica, did I get that correct? Oh, you just, there we go. You there, Jessica? All right, I'm not hearing Jessica's audio, so um, I will move over to Fran, and then we can come back to Jessica, and hopefully we're able to connect. Are you there, Fran? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Hi, how are you? Good. And so do you want to share where you're, where you're located and what you do? Um, I am located right now in Clearwater, Florida, and I am an educational technologist and um, consultant, and I taught Spanish for 20 years. So when you say I'm located right now, are you moving to <laughs> Texas or what? No, I'm always on the move, but no, I, I live in Clearwater, but I always feel like I'm a traveling girl, so. <laughs> That's awesome. And Jessica probably hopped out to hop back in. Sometimes we got to do that on Google Hangouts um, to get our audio functioning correctly. Um, Travis is here, and he's going to share some some of the things that they're doing at their campus and we may have some other folks jump on and share as well which would be awesome and Fran I think you wanted to share some of the things that you were able to see as well in a classroom um, at later on as well so yes. hopefully we'll get that going and again if you guys have any questions feel free to post those questions there and we will work on answering anything that we can so that would be great all right Travis do you want to take it away sure all right, all right. Um so we've transformed our media center into really our makerspace slash um, we redesigned it to really encompass what we needed at our school. We, we, w when we went down this journey two years ago, our media specialist was given a task by our building principal to change the environment in our space, um, to look at this makerspace concept. And so she had already kind of been down the journey as well, and the two minds of ours kind of came together, and we started saying, okay, how can we make this a hopping place every day of school? And we really come by our, our whole idea of John Kalowski's quote that says the library should be one of the, be the hub of, of your school, and it should be the hub of learning, reading, research, um, and collaboration. And so we took that quote and we kind of ran with it and said, how can we create that space in here? Because prior to us doing this, um, our, our library had what you see on that back wall there, just white wall, um, where you see the green and blue now. Uh, that wasn't there. It was all that cream-colored white. And then we had beautiful oak furniture. Um, so we had really heavy tables, but very durable, very nice, some really nice chairs. But they were not kid-friendly and were not um, functionable in the sense of being flexible to create different learning environments inside our space. And so we went down the journey to change that space. And so we've got the steel case furniture. Um, we got the node chairs on caster wheels. They can move. So we have this huge open floor plan that can be tra transformed anytime we need it. Um, the books are all around the outside or the backside here of our media center. And then over here is where we have our collaboration table. And so our students will sit up at this table on those stools, and we have an 80-inch TV hooked up to an Apple TV so our kids can display their iPads or their MacBooks right up on, those, on those, um, that TV. Uh, we have inside here, this used to be my office, and I got rid of my office for the kids. Um, this is the outside. So inside here is our think tank room. So we have a giant whiteboard wall on our, on our, in our room for our kids to map out. We're in the process of preparing for a huge conference coming up here in April that our kids got selected to bring our entire makerspace to and work with teachers. It's our regional technology conference. So they've, they've back planned from basically the conference date all the way back and every day they have a plan of what they're, what they're working on so that they're prepared to train teachers and work with teachers. Um, but we just have some flexible furniture. So we have some couches in here. 
Um, some node chairs will come in and out of here. But this is more of the quiet area because of the door. So it's still a library and kids still want to study, still want something quiet in our middle school. So instead of me having my quiet area of my office, I moved everything out and said, here, this is for you. You guys make it. And so we've created that space for them uh, based on what they need. Because at any given time, we'll have two classes in here. Um, one class doing a project on our green screen and the other pro class doing something with the makerspace and it will be loud. It's not your quiet library time so we still needed something for those students. Um, and then we get to our makerspace where it's our creativity and innovation area and this is a designated space behind those bookshelves that you saw and we just we just got creative with how to rearrange the books. We didn't, we didn't lose books, we didn't take books off the shelf um, we just moved books to the other side and used all the back shelving for our shelving. And our media specialist, being the amazing organizer that she is, um, went out and found these great totes for us. And so now we have everything labeled and kids can go and they can find the marker booth or they can find the tools that they need and it's all labeled. We have extra ones that kids can check out and put their supplies in. So if they're working on a project that they need to do over and over, they can do that. Um, but then we have all kinds of, I shared a resource um, link with all of our stuff in it, so I won't necessarily show all the pieces of our puzzle that we have, but this is the space kind of where we store everything, and then a lot of our tools get integrated into our curriculum with our, with our other subject matters. So it's a space where kids come in before school, after school, and then during directed studies, which is our study hall, they'll come in and it's open, open maker space. So truly, we don't tell them what to do, they tell us what they need. Um, and they do that. And then when we bring it into their classroom, uh, that's my job as the integration is to work with the teacher and collaborate and say, okay, what do we need? And then we bring our robotics in, we bring our drones in, we'll 3D print stuff. It just kind of depends on what the teacher needs. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome. So I hear drones and I hear 3D printer. Do you have some things that you can show us? Yeah. Yep. Let me grab a couple things. That's a good question, Judy. Um, she asked if the media specialist has shared space with you, Travis. So when he gets back, let's definitely get that answer because I think that's that's a valid question. It's funny because he gave up his office to have that that space. So Travis, we were talking about. Judy asked the question if um, the media specialist shares the space with you as well. Yes, so I moved my office out of that little back office to the front counter where um, it's basically our checkout. So she sits on one side of the desk and I sit on the other side. Um, and the kids, we're, we're really a team. Like, this doesn't work without both of us. And that's what's so much fun is that my, my main position is just in the middle school here, so I don't have to move buildings, thankfully. Um, but we're such a team. Like, everything we do, we decide together. We find out what the kids are wanting, what the kids need. Um, the kids go to either one of us for stuff. So it's it's really merged into a true partnership of tech and media. That's amazing. That's really I, I that's unusual. It's hard to find two people that could work that closely together and it, it really function well. So that's that's a great that's a great thing you guys got going on. That's awesome. You ready to demo Is some it, stuff for us? Yeah. So this was a three D printed globe and it's the layers of the earth. So students did this for geography. It took us 28 hours to print. Um, and there are some faults in the print itself, but the kids were able to um, fix it up and paint on it so that it has the continents and the water and then the layers of the earth that is here. Um, so that one's our big print. That's probably one of our largest prints we've done. Um, kids will make their name badges. Kids will, um, some of our students in science were, were doing an experiment of uh, testing out different containers to melt ice cubes. Mm -hmm. And so some kids 3D printed a container based on the shape of the ice cube and had to do all the dimensions. And we 3D printed it and they got to test it out um, and how they could make it better. Uh, some kids are making a hand crank right now. They're in the process. I've got bits and pieces of that one. I probably could find that. Um, they're basically making a hand crank fan. And so they're, got, they're printing the gears and the levers. Um, they've got the casing of the fan. They've got the fan blades that are printed in 3D um, plastic. And so they're going to assemble that here in the next week or so. That's pretty incredible. Uh, 
We have drones. So these guys are little dr jumping drones. We use this in math class to find Pythagorean theorem. Mm -hmm. And so what we did there was we took the meter stick and we just taped it to a wall and used a slow motion app on our iPads to get the height of the jump because we could slow it down to start to see the deceleration of it. So they got the height of the jump, and then the jumping sumo will jump up and jump out. And so wherever it landed, they took the, the length measurement and the, the height yeah. me measurement to find C squared. And so they used these guys to do that. Um, we have some flying ones that we use for coding and programming, and then we also use it in math for coordinate plane. So the teacher used the drones as the helicopter and our driving Spiros as the taxi cab, and they had to test their different plots based on which one they were driving. How, okay, that, all of these things sound, sound incredible. How much are you involved in this process? Obviously, you're showing, you're making these things available, but I mean, is it something that you're having to go to their class every single time for when this is being incorporated? That's a good question. Um, right away, it is. Um, right away, it's something that I, I team up with teachers, and that's where my that's where really my passion drives this. Because um, I was a fourth grade teacher prior to being an integrationist, so like having an extra set of hands in the classroom, I always was like, thank you. So I know, like bringing these new things in, it takes a little work, and so. Um, I do spend, like when we do do things like this, I do spend a lot of my time with that teacher, um, mm -hmm. either laying out the lesson, lesson design, and then saying, okay, um, I'll be here to, to support the tech piece because if something goes down tech-wise, you as the teacher have a backup plan so that we don't lose a day of instruction or an hour. And so they'll, they'll just keep rolling with it, and I'll try to fix the tech piece of it. So it's kind of that, that merge of, of how that works. Now, after being there a day or so, Usually, then it's it's pretty smooth going. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Judy, Jessica, and Andy joined us in this time. I know that they're going to have some questions. They've been kind of posting some questions uh, every now and again. Um, but if you guys want to go and introduce yourselves, and then I'm sure you guys have some questions for Travis as well. Okay, I'll go first. Can you hear me this time? Yay, Jessica. <laughs> Awesome. Um, I am Jessica Torres. I'm an instructional coach at Lake Air Montessori in Waco, Texas. Um, I primarily coach pre-K through third grade, but our campus runs all the way through eighth grade. That's awesome. All right. And we have Judy and Andy. If one of you guys want to introduce yourselves. Hey, guys. I am Andy. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yay, I'm Andy McNair, and I teach um, gifted education at a school in Waco, Texas, um, and we focus primarily on Genius Hour. Um, that's kind of our priority every day in class, and then also um, we are working on getting a makerspace going, and so one of my questions is just getting, um, you know, teachers in the regular classroom, they have so much going on. How do you get them on board How do you something, get them like something like this and encourage them to take part? I don't know if that question is before, before I jump in. No, that's a great question. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold that question real quick. I've got a student here that um, I'm gonna I'm gonna just have him explain his thought process or his feelings of the makerspace, and then if if somebody has one or two questions for him before I send him back to class, you can definitely ask. But uh, Seth, we're talking with some teachers, mostly from Texas, right? I we, we have quite Florida. a few teachers from Texas, or, or yes. For those of the us southern, here. the southern area, mm -hmm. um, talking about makerspaces, getting things started. Um, as a student or a learner in our middle school, what what does the makerspace mean to you? Um, it's somewhere where we can use our imagination and be with our friends and work on a project that we really like to do. Like me and my friend, we're making an RC car right now that we can only do on Wednesdays because that's for a Genius Hour project, and we work on it some morning. So we technically use teamwork with a bunch of other people to work on it. That's very cool. So you guys are working on a, a car? Yeah, we're working on an RC car with like motors from taking apart things that we've taken apart over the time of the makerspace. Do you guys have it there? Um, where's your box? Oh, it's right up there. You want to grab it? Yeah. Um, I'll have him grab it. So yeah, so these these boys um have taken apart two RC cars that haven't worked, and then they've used different motors in our makerspace to start to us to start to assemble this new car and so this is what we have so far on it. We have to put motors on it so it drives. That is cool. 
So has it started driving yet? Oh, you can drive it with like Spiro and that things because the tires spin easily on carpet because they're flattened out so and it has tape around it so it doesn't have traction. It just goes. Mhm. Mm That's pretty awesome. That's pretty. In what grade are you in? Sixth. So where do you see this applying in your studies at school? Um, you can use like drones for measuring how high they can go compared to a different drone. Like there's. RC drones that are controlled by controllers that can go a certain height and then other drones that can go different heights from iPads without disconnecting. And for these you can see how far it goes without like without losing connection with something just like the iPad and the controller and that. That's awesome. Do you guys have any questions for him? First off, I've been taking some screenshots. I hope that's okay. Is he alright with getting Absolutely. his picture? Perfect. Yep, yep, you're okay. Perfect. Do you guys have any questions for the student? I do. So what is what would you say is your what would be the main reason you would suggest for other schools to do something like this in their school? Like as a student, what would you say to teachers that were thinking about doing this and just haven't done it yet? What would be your advice? Um, they mainly do it in the morning before school so you don't have to like sit in the gym waiting to go to class. Like advisory starts at eight a clock and we have to wait 20 minutes if we get into school before we can go in the gym so they just open it to the, anybody that wants to come down in the morning vet and in DS for the last 43 minutes of school they let us do it and after school. What would, what would be your suggestion to convince them that they need to have a space like this? Probably so kids if they get all their stu homework done and their studying done for if they have tests they can go do something like create something cool use something with computers and coding and all that. Yeah, so it sounds like you're saying instead of just using that time just sitting there doing nothing, they could be doing something meaningful by making something, right? Is that what you're getting at? Yeah. Very cool. Love it. That's What's the coolest thing that you made at the Makerspace so far? Is it your cars? It's probably what we're working on right now because we're working on creating like a little, me and my friend, we're going to make something that can actually like move its head make, using Hummingbird. And you can program it to do all that. Like it bobs its head backward and forward, forward and backward. That's pretty awesome. That's very cool. Does anybody else have any questions, Judy? I know you didn't introduce yourself. Uh, do you have any questions for the student? Hi there. I was just wondering where you are getting some of your ideas from. Um, so it sounds like you've got some pretty ingenious. Um, thoughts and it sounds like you've got a partner that you're working really well with and I guess I'm just curious as to how you are selecting the different projects that you're making. Um, we just came across because he said he didn't have many RC cars at home that didn't work so we just came across him bringing the RC cars so we could take apart and redo because we're taking they have a spot where you can take apart like computer monitors and put them back together so they work and like different things like that. So are you going to be there a couple more years? Is it through eighth grade? Yeah. Man, this kid is awesome. It would be awesome to build like these students that really get the maker spaces and oversee making sure. Do you guys have students that already kind of take care of your maker space or is it done predominantly from you, Travis? No, so that's, that's what's really unique about this space is we try to stay out of it. It's totally theirs. Um, it's 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 their space. They they own it. Um, we've tried to put some things in as expectations. Um, sometimes we have to close it for a day or two days because we don't meet the expectations, or we leave a mess, or we don't clean up after ourselves. So then we'll close it and really just say, you know, we're not here to pick up after you. It's it's really your space, and we let them drive their learning. They they're the ones who come to us and are like, hey, can we maybe get this, or can we build an RC car? Or we've got one group that totally priced out an an RC car from basic parts and motor all the way up to the final product and they went to our parent group and asked for funding and our parent group said yep we'll fund this and so they bought all the little pieces so we've got one group piecing together an RC car another group that bought all the pieces and now have to build it and so it just kinda depends on on the students like last year we didn't have any of that we had one group that decided to make a hovercraft a hoverboard out of um, board and shower curtain and a leaf blower but last year's group was completely different than this year's group. So every year it changes, and so you can't 
I can't pick out the items that they're going to be interested in. Otherwise, that starts to look like a classroom where you box them in. Where here, I just I really let them do what they're passionate about. And I saw a question from Andy. We also have a viewer that asked a question as well. Um, and really, and I think this is all of us wondering, you know, I would think that there's a way to make this work without having to purchase things on a regular basis. Um, and yep. you guys are going out and using the resources like your parent group, which Andy wants to know a little bit more about. Um, but is there kind of like too many resources that kids bring in? Or how do you get the word out that you're looking for stuff? Is that digital? Or is that just word of mouth? or? Yep. So a little bit of both. Um, one. One way we do it is um, we just tell the kids, like the kids will come to us and be interested in something and we'll try to piece it out together and say, okay, what are the things we need and kind of make a shopping list. And then we just kind of look around and see what we've got. Is it coming up with recycled items? Like we're right now we're doing a huge recycling program where um, media specialist, myself, our music teacher, we're all bringing in recycled items because in about a week or so the music class is making their own instruments out of recycled items. So they're going to come into the makerspace, we're going to have all these recycled bottles and cardboard and all of that and they're going to get to make their recycled instrument that makes three different tones. And so they're going to have to figure out how that works and what they need for that, but we're going to provide that. So we, we have stuff in here from low tech all the way up to high tech. Um, most of our low tech stuff barely costs us anything. Um, we started this whole space last year on $500. Um, and now it's only grown. It's, it's truly only grown to where we're at today. A lot of it is as I leverage Twitter as our friend. Um, all these companies on, uh, that have maker items want their product out there. And so I've leveraged Twitter as my marketing item and I market for those companies completely free with the idea that they'll return investment on us and give us free stuff. And so they have. Um, a lot of our stuff this year has all come because I've asked the question, will you invest in my kids? Um, here's what my kids are doing. This is where we want to go. Will you invest in them? And we have Little Bits and we have Hummingbird Robotics and we just have Hue Animation. All three of those companies have come on board and invested in our kids and said, we want your kids sharing their story. Um, will you make videos of them using our stuff? And um, put it out on Twitter, blog about it, let us interview kids, and we're like, absolutely, like you've got full, we'll, we'll partner with you the best we can. And so that's kind of where we've gone and what we've done with, with our resources. So we have, we have some stuff that is, is kit-based, and then we have stuff that just totally pieced together. I mean, kids bring in lumber and they, they piece it together for us. That's incredible. Um, so I think um, one of the questions that we have right here from Matthew Linchek, who's watching right now, um, what would be a good way to start at the elementary level? Yes, yeah, so I'm working with our elementaries right now. Um, two of our elementaries have gone down this venture now after kind of seeing our space. And elementary looks a little different, but I think you can also be creative with it because um, media time in the library, especially like in our, in our state, they have to have library time and they have standards they must cover. But most of the time it's checking out a book, a uh, lesson is being taught, and then the kids get to kind of free read. Well, how sweet would it be that we have books that kids are interested in, maybe it's little bits, maybe it's circuits, maybe it's um, Legos, whatever it may be, maybe they're, maybe they're interested in that and they check out a book, but then we have a station in the media center that for the remaining of their time they get to build, they get to create something during that time. So it's not necessarily a free read time, but they get that opportunity of having stations in the media center. Um, because I, I, I am a big proponent of it being in a media center. You're going to hear other people say, oh, it can happen in classrooms, it can be on carts. Absolutely. Like, I agree 100%. But I think the media center is you, typically the second largest room in your school that sits empty the most time besides the gymnasium when it's not, when it's not being used. And so how can we use that space all the time and make it something that kids want to be at and kids want to be around. Um, so at an elementary level you could start with that. You could start with just a couple things and make them station work or you could then look at saying okay you know what we want to bring this in the classrooms and so we're going to put this on a cart and they can check out the Makerspace cart and just like they check out a library book and that's very successful and works just, just as well. Um, 
it's just that idea of what do you have and what do you need, um, and you have to you really have to keep that learner focused in mind. What do our learners need, um, and how can I do that? So it can be customized every year, really, because you have a different group of students that have different needs. What do you do with all the extra stuff? Like, what if you have too much stuff that that you have as it building up throughout time? Um, just keep putting it away. <laughs> um, <laughs> Finding I, I don't think a deserted that. classroom or something. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, and that's some of our reason why we had to get totes because we were, we were just, I mean, we have things that we haven't pulled out yet this year that we pulled out last year because the kids just haven't asked or haven't gotten to that point where we felt like, oh, this might be something to introduce them with. Um, so there's things that we haven't used this year that we used last year and it might come out next year. And so it just, you're absolutely right. Every year a makerspace should change. If we, if if it doesn't, then we are doing our students a disservice in this maker culture because we're saying this is what is we're determining what is a maker, mm -hmm. and and that's not that's not on us as educators. We shouldn't determine this is what this is what constitutes as a maker. This doesn't because really every student has it in them. It's just a giving them the freedom and that flexibility and that time to do something. That's awesome. That's really good. Anybody else have any other questions um, for Travis? I'm sorry, Travis, that we've we've like held you hostage here in your library. This is really yeah, you're cool. okay. You're okay. Yeah, this time frame is is pretty open for us because it's right over our lunch, so kids pop in and out, but it's pretty quiet, so we're good. Um, Jessica said, "What materials do you start with?" Um, we started with with five items because we knew. We wanted a variety of them, and then we just asked the students. Like we watched what the students did and said, "Okay, how can we add to this?" So we started with little bits. We started with makey makey kits. We started with snap circuits, take apart tech, and then we had a Lego robotics team that wasn't using their uh, Mindstorm robotic uh, brains all year long. So when they weren't using them, they donated them to us to use. Well, what we found out very quickly was kids really loved robotics. But the Mindstorms without a teacher instruction was was tough. So if they didn't have a background in it, it was tough. So we knew they were really interested in robotics. So we said, you know what? What? How can we get simpler robots that they can just use and, and make? So um, we got we we did marker robots, and so it's a so, red solo cup, a hobby motor, a double A battery, and markers, and they hook that up, and it makes a marker bot that draws. So kind of like a doodle bot. Um, the girls, even our guys, loved doing that. I mean, it was it was awesome. They dressed those things up. They made characters out of them. It was it was fun. Uh, so we got we 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 watched them. They really liked robots. So we went down the robot ro road last year, and we got Sphero Robotics. Um, we've got a humanoid robot that walks and talks, and kids can program. And then um, this year, um, robotics has still been pretty popular, but kids these this group of Kids are more interested in wiring and hooking up things. Um, some kids have taken apart our, our computers and taken fans out and used our fans to power different things. So it just kind of depends on, on the year. And it looks like we have another classroom ready to share, a first grade classroom in some of the spaces. Two minutes. In two minutes. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Does anybody have any other questions for Travis? And and Judy, I, I, I asked you to come on. You had said that you wanted to come on. Do you have a maker space that you're at or that you facilitate or some comments that you wanted to make? Um, yeah, hi. I'm a media specialist in Michigan, actually. I have fifth and sixth graders. So I'm tied into a fixed schedule. I have 24 classes, and I'm... Um, working on building the ma makerspace movement into our program. So I've been working on the physical space for a while, and we've kind of got the things, <laughs> well, not everything, but some of the things. And I love, Travis, that you have the students at the center of everything that you do. So kind of where I'm at right now is we've been kind of trickling it into, you know, their recess time and things like that. But I'm trying to build it into the actual curriculum and I feel like I'm trying to balance the free choice of kids with their recess time or some of the open times that I have with the fixed time that I have and just kind of rethinking how I deliver my curriculum so that it's not so rigid and it's much more open and just weaving in that innovation and that creativity. So I think if I had to have a question, um, it's how do I balance all of that? I mean, if it 
in a perfect world, I would be a flexible schedule because that's so much more meaningful for kids and it's more authentic. But unfortunately, I'm locked into these 50-minute time slots. And in my open slots, I do have classes come down all the time. So I guess it's more of a management. Like, and how do I how do I get it so that the, the learning is leading, not the clock, if that makes sense? Yeah. Well, I, if we can if we can figure out a time stoppage, that would be incredible. <laughs> I agree. Time is our is our problem. And I think a lot of teachers feel the same way. You know, they would love to incorporate these things. And I, you know, I saw that there was a question about standards from Lisa, and I think that that is a a question that everybody kind of comes back to. That we understand that the necessity is there for our students. But how do we demand the time when they have this much time to cover this much stuff? And, you know, at what point do they incorporate that without hindering what they have to accomplish within their standards? And I understand teachers are just kind of in a rock and a hard spot. I think they want to use more and they really feel overwhelmed. So I think that's also the point of what Travis is doing and Judy's doing because you are able to connect with the teachers and offer the support along the way so that they're not on their own. They don't have to do all the back end work, you know, they're just providing this in the classroom. Um, but at the same time, I can see the fear. I think that's why we're probably getting a lot more resistance about it, for sure. Yeah, we've talked about that on our campus too, just that um, hesitation to do anything like this just because they are trying to cover the standards and getting those things done. And, and we were actually talking about this last week. There was an article, I have, I'll have to share it, but just talking about bringing in the questioning and when they're working on those projects asking questions that have to do with those standards and guiding them along the way but understanding that they can learn the standards by doing instead of it having to be told mm -hmm. to them. And I, I, I know we have Fran with the group right now and I think they're probably ready to go. I can't unmute them but they'll have to unmute themselves. Sorry Fran, I muted you earlier. <laughs> but I definitely want to give them a chance. They're with students right now. If you want to go ahead and unmute yourself. Not quite yet. I still see it muted. Maybe I'll mute you again. <laughs> no, I, I'm not sure exactly. Go ahead and work on that, Fran, and I'll just go ahead and introduce Matthew. Just joined on. He was one of the. He had asked a question about implementing this into the elementary classroom as well to Travis, and um, he, Matthew, you had mentioned some makerspace too. So I want you to have a chance to share. Um, Fran, we have we still don't have any audio coming from you. Um, you'll have to add. You'll have to unmute because I muted you. I can see you guys there. We're we're able to see the video, but we just can't hear any audio. Do you want to try to go out and come back in and see if that fixes the problem? All right. Okay. All right, Matthew. Do you want to share a little bit about what you're doing? Oh, sure. Well, I work with um, elementary schools in the east side of Houston, and we have started to develop makerspaces within our libraries. Right now, we still have librarians. I think we're in the um, beginning stages of moving them toward media specialists, where they're going to um, be able to not only have them check out books, but actually have stations available and mobile carts. I heard you say that a couple minutes ago. Um, I think that's a good idea because with our set schedule. Okay. Okay. Are we live? Oh, they can hear us now. <laughs> Matthew, I'm going to let this class go because they have students who will come back first. to you. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. How do Hi. we do this? Hi. How are you? Doing good. Thank you for sharing with us today. Okay. Um, can you, this is in my first grade class. They're here for library, but the last two weeks we do makerspaces. So they rather do it every time they come here, but today we're doing the makerspaces. And um, we'll walk around. If can you see this? Is, yes, okay. it's perfect. All right. Okay, so this right here is Connects. Um, I just bought a whole bunch of Connects. So the kids are building uh, different things with the books, and it's very interesting to see what they come up with. Okay. Um, so far, so good. Can you guys see? Uh, maybe point it down. <laughs> down. Okay, point it down. Okay, now can you see? That's Alyssa's, much better. Yeah. Alyssa's waving to you. Okay. Hi, Alyssa. Okay, Miss Ham. Okay, so that's Connects. And then I have um, Caroline. I also have puzzles. 
Caroline wanted to do the puzzle. As you can see, we still haven't finished our Christmas puzzle yet, but she's working on the puzzle. I have a lot of puzzles that I've gotten from the thrift stores or um, garage sales. I try to find things cheap, and it seems to work out pretty good. So she's working on um, the puzzle. One thing I've noticed that depending on the, the grade level, depends on what stations I pull out and what stations they use. Um, the little kids like the puzzles, whereas the older kids could care less about the puzzles. Uh, this is my Lego station. No matter what grade I have, they like to do the Legos. <laughs> I like to do see, the Legos, definitely. I have um, <laughs> two honey honeydew carts. I start out with one. I'm working my way up to two as I buy things. I have mostly Legos in this one. I have Erectors. I have Connects. I have Osmos. Um, I have well, those are my Lincoln Logs from when I was little. My mother still had them. I went and got them. Um, I have snap circuits. I have little bits. Right now, I'm not doing the snap circuits or the little bits with these guys. In my other first grade class, I have a boy who has little bits, so he's my little expert to help the kids. Um, this is a marble run that the kids put together, and they make. I don't know if you can see it. Sorry about the mess here. It's also storage. <laughs> okay. They um, there's in here there's different designs. It's based on layers that the kids put together all these different pieces, and they love this piece of the gravity. You wouldn't believe what they've done with this thing. It's amazing what their minds think of, and the little balls and um, they make marble runs. They have to know which side to use. Um, one side have one output, some have two outputs. One, the ball will stay. If they do it upside down, the ball's not going to go anywhere. So they have to take that into consideration when they're building the things. I explained them to them once, and then they go from there. These right here are magnet tiles. These are a little expensive, but the kids love them. And they're magnetic. And it comes with designs that they can build anything, and they take it apart. All, um, I say it to my fourth grade. My fourth graders even love this. Good job, Henry. Very <laughs> nice. Wow. Oh, to Connor, thanks. I made three of the houses on top. Okay. It's you want to show them the, um, we can't go that way. oh, we can't go that way. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. I'd show you my <laughs> most favorite station is the, I call them the, the beer pong cups, but anyway, they don't know that. Um, <laughs> The kids love those. I just, the solo cups, thank you. What? I, okay, back in college, what am I, okay. Those ki <laughs> the kids love those. That is the cheapest thing. I just keep going to Costco and buying them, and they build and they build. This is Gobi. Um, these are magnetic little individual rods and balls that the kids, I went on the Internet, and I created little challenge cards that, to help them see. Oh, my gosh. Samantha, fantastic. You did. It looks like a Ferris wheel. Good job. Can you see the thing that she built with it? That looks great. Good job, Samantha. Um, this one at first wasn't very popular. Then I pulled it out with some second graders, girls, and they absolutely loved it. So um, now I'm going to get, oh, my earplugs falling out, to get um, a bigger set so they can build even more. I have another station over here. This is the straws and connectors. Some of the things that these kids have built is like, how did you come up with that idea? And these are first graders. These are all first graders doing this. Um, I just give it to them, and then they go and they build. Um, a new thing that I'm just getting ready are my maker spaces in a box that um, for kids who don't want to participate in the group stations, they can go to here and pull out um, a box. I'm still in the process of setting up. I got the Rainbow Looms, Pipe Cleaners. I just got my Pipe Cleaner book today. I have my Ozobots, I have my Makey Makey. I'm going to be using the Makey Making Ozobots tomorrow because I have fourth grade and fifth grade. That's the one, the older kids like the robots. I have several robots that, um, with some iPads, I just got three more iPads that have all the apps that the kids can use the Blockly code. Um, pot holders, I bought a loom. I even, if you look down here, I, I'm in the process of getting more yarn. I even made cheap cardboard looms, Pinterest. Um, to teach the kids how to weave. I'm going to be doing this in second grade. They have an Indian unit, and we're going to be doing weaving. Um, I got some different types of robots that the kids can build. I have origami, duct tape. I'm going to do stop motion with the kids. It's been a work in progress. Um, I've been doing this for three years, and I'm just getting more ideas now. I just found a lady on Twitter yesterday from California, and she does STEM challenges 
with the families once a month. These things aren't staying in my ears. And um, we're going to have a Google Hangout on Saturday to talk about her makerspaces and my makerspaces to get some ideas. So Twitter's a wonderful thing. I just find things, what people are doing, and it's just truly amazing, you know, what's out there. Um, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Because I can keep talking and talking and talking. Uh, Judy said, what is the name of the STEM challenge? Um, she hasn't got me the bottom. Teachers pay teachers. I did find one. If you search for STEM town STEM challenges, um, there's different things. Um, can we walk over to my desk and I'll get the cards? <gasps> Henry, great job. This lady that was in California, named her is Robin Glutok. She had one where the one of the um, one of the excuse my mess. One of her challenges for the month they um, had a, you know the water bottles. How did they decorate the water bottles? She had an envelope challenge. How they came in with um, envelopes. They had a cardboard challenge. Uh, paper roll. I'm been saving paper roll. Paper t um, toilet paper rolls. The things that they made with the. Um, so, can you still hear me? That one's going out. Okay. The um, paper towels. But I found this on um, Teachers Pay Teachers. And like Lego building. What types of buildings can you create with Legos? Can you replicate famous buildings? Can you see these? There's questions on the other side. Upside down. Sorry. Um, Catapult challenge, what materials can you use to make your catapult? That's another thing that I'm in the process of getting is toothpicks. And I don't know if I'm going to go with um, marshmallows or gumdrops, something stale ones so they won't eat them. Um, how can you <laughs> change the catapult? This is my next thing, paper airplane. Yeah, paper airplane. This is, in fact, um, I just sent Val an email, my principal, to talk about doing this um, next year, making challenges for the families. Am I going too fast? My Sphero. I have a Sphero. Oh, let me show my little robots that I just bought, the porcupine. Oh, they... oh sorry, my talk. See, I can keep talking and talking. Do you have any questions? <laughs> I, I don't think I am seeing any more questions. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, the one kid's behind me. I, I can't let you see them. They're on the no. Oh, I'm Hold on glad. for a minute. Um, hold on for a minute. John, that. John, Musa, come over here for a minute. Go move over there for a minute so we can see. Who is she on Twitter? Twitter? Okay, okay, you got it. Your battery's going down. Okay, can you see? Hold on. Go behind here. No. John, come here, John. There we go. Okay, so can you see some of the cups, the things that they're building with the cups? Yeah. These are cheap. You know, as they, I just go get the big, huge packages and just bring them in here from Costco or Sam's, and they just, some of the stuff that these, they did one all the way up to the ceiling, which was, it was like a, that spiral one that they did, which was really neat. This is a favorite one. Even the older kids like this one. Hmm. Um, okay. Oh, can you? Come this one. I'll show you. Um, don't look at the mess. Okay. <laughs> don't look at my mess. Okay. I didn't clean. This is. I just got these. And these are for um, Make Block, and they're programmable. They have Bluetooth, and the kids can control um, with a remote controller. But they also there's an also an app on the iPads. It's kind of like the Blockly, the drag and drop that they can program these little guys to move around. I showed this to kindergartners last week, and they fell in love with these. So this is my new thing I'm going to be trying with my um, fifth graders tomorrow. That but these like are um, pretty um, – I got two of them for $84, and I don't think that's very bad. I got them from Amazon. Oh, I, you know what I forgot to say? On Amazon, I don't know if you're aware of this, but if you provide to Amazon your tax-exempt your tax exempt form, you they'll apply it to your account, and you won't have to pay taxes on anything. So I don't know if you're aware of that. So that saves me some money right there. Um, do you have any other questions? Um, oh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. I don't see any other questions at this point. Okay. About, I think we're good. Uh, Fran, is there anything else that you wanted to add? Okay, hold on for a minute. Fran. Fran. Here, it's up to you now. Okay. Here's Miss Asia. Sorry. Hello? No problem. I just wanted to ask if you had any other thing that you wanted to add. Um, no. I mean, she's basically done this all in about a year, and she has so much to share. And just uh, it's really neat how a lot of um, times she gets things donated from, you know, different families or goes, you know, to garage, you know, shopping for garage sales. And then just uh, – she is really good about following um, certain maker um, teachers uh, or tech toy teachers. Um, for example, um, the Top Tech Toys with Ed Tech Nerd, um, Brian Miller, and um, Katrina Keen. Um, they have a Top Tech Toy show now. <laughs> but um, and then 
you know, she's just connecting with people on Twitter and just finding a lot of great ideas. Um, another awesome uh, resource is Diana Rendina. We're lucky because she lives here in the area. She's over in Tampa, about a half hour from us, and um, we've uh, seen her at different conferences and um, we've visited, you know, her space. And she has an awesome blog, I think called Renovated Learning, um, that has awesome, awesome ideas of what she's done. And she's in the process, I think, of writing a book about all this, too. And so I that's do, another resource. I do see a question that they were wanting to know her name, her Twitter handle. Okay, it's Elaine Deja, and it's spelled E-L-A-I-N-E underscore D-E-J-A. And then what I did, because um, Elaine has a lot to share, we literally last week spent 45 minutes, and I just followed her around um, the library, and I just periscoped it. And basically, she went through all her stations and all the things she's collected and how she uses it with kids. And this space, like she said, is um, K through 5. And um, so if you'd like to watch that one you know, in slow motion and not just have the, the real brief version, um, we'll make that available on the S'more. So we'll have a link to that. Very cool. Does anybody has, have any questions before we let Fran not have to be with... I don't know what Fran wants to do. She can be wherever she wants. <laughs> I'm done. Does anybody have we any just questions? wanted to share our little Florida piece. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. But okay. I love, uh, Travis, what you were saying. I mean, uh, th they've done the K through 5 piece, but they have no idea what to do for the middle school piece. And some of these pieces seem too juvenile, but I was, you know, saying to um, different teachers here, sometimes it's, you know, like a Sphero or other pieces, even like a Lego or something. They can still be building and working with them, but the objective is a little bit different or maybe, you know, they have like a, a physics problem or something that they have to solve and then they... Um, make it, you know, they show their learning um, using all these different tools that to some of the teachers seem too juvenile, but, you know, I, I disagree with them. And the other thing I remember um, when I taught middle school at a different school was that whatever data that the kids were coming up with, they would graph it in numbers or Excel, and then they yep. would have to make sense of it, and that took it to a deeper level. And also, but they were just, you know, they were building the connect bridges, or they had certain obstacles that they had to get past, and, um, you know, you're using the same exact tools, or so. Yeah, yeah we, we, we use the sparrows right in silence because the teacher needed to standardize we needed to graph three different points or three different data sets. So we just used the sparrows and they had to do three different sets of testing with them and then they were able to graph them all. So mm -hmm. it, it's just getting creative with how, how, how do you really the things that you can Exactly. All right. And then yeah, just like you guys said, there are tons of resources of um, Teachers Pay Teachers and other places where you can find all sorts of challenges and things to do that you can use in a makerspace. One other thing I wanted to mention to Jamie, did you all, have you all heard of um, Kane's Arcade? I know all of that and the Global Day of Play. I see Travis is nodding his head. I've heard Global um, Day of Play. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Um, it's in October, but I mean, you could do it any time of year, but it was on the premise of this little eight-year-old boy who's older now. He was in his dad's hardware shop, and he would just take boxes and turn them into arcade games. And so um, I've done it at a couple schools and um, where we'd sponsor it, but basically everyone brings in all recycled materials or... Um, you know, cardboard, and they made arcade games. And then if you can make it into an event and have the other classes from around your school um, play the games. And usually we did it with um, third, fourth, and fifth grade, but then we would invite the middle schoolers to come play the games. And the pride that the kids had in others playing their games was outstanding. And they, they literally, they, the kids were beaming with joy that these big sixth, seventh, and eighth graders wanted to play their games. And, uh, it was just really neat. And then there's, you know, upcycled um, um, fashion show, if you've ever heard of that or done one of those things, too. Um, there's a lot of things you can, you know, weave into the makerspace. 
Um, I am going, I know we're kind of getting close here to ending. Um, I'm trying to just put some of our links that we have going on back on our events page. And um, people are really sharing just some great stuff, so I'll, I'll try to go back. Um, our chat here inside the video chat is awesome, um, but it's hard. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Fran, I might go ahead and mute you just from the back end. So That's good. If, I, if you get, you might just want to jump right back in. But um, here is, you know, just some things that we had talked about. We're, we're hoping to get that pulled together. Um, Carrie has put together some things for us who has started Connected Convos. We would like to do this every Monday um, to just to get a chance for us to collaborate on some, some ideas and topics. Um, we have some other things floating around, but I just wanted to share a couple things. So um, next week at one of the schools here that I'm just new to this district this year, but one of the concepts we want to do is a day of creation. And so we have been planning kind of having a cycle through because with me, I'm working with the teachers. And so that professional de development there is just working with um, preparing the teachers, teaching some tools. And then we're going to have this day of creation where they're cycling their students through with them being a part of it. And then their responsibility is to bring it back to the classroom. So some of the things that we're covering, they really haven't ever seen or ever experienced before. So. Um, um, some of the things that we're going to be talking about that day um, include 3D. So 3D printing um, has never been in the district. They've never had a 3D printer here before. Um, so that that was just ordered and should be here by that day. Um, and also one of the cool things that they're incorporating is this right here is this 3 doodler and that's going to be one of the stations of creating something there, just giving them the resource because I'm looking at it from a digital perspective since I'm with technology. And so trying to pull in some digital uh, features and concepts here. And I tried to make um, the amazing, you know, Eiffel Tower that they had going on, and my amazing Eiffel Tower. I'm just gonna share it because I'm just so proud of it. Um, let me go ahead and gather it together. It's right here. So I'm really, really good with this three doodler, and it's super impressive. But here's the cool part: is is really just giving our, our kids a chance to play with these things. Doesn't mean it happens instantaneous, instantaneously, but we've been able to see some cool things. But having those stencils to work with that they can then draw on and create, I learned that later. Um, although, I am proud because I made a star, so that was pretty awesome. Um, but we also have, um, of course, you know, Sphero will be pulling in a little bit, and we're going to be using Build with Chrome and pulling in um, Legos and cooperate together so that they're building digitally and they're also building um, together just to show physically what it looks like as well as digitally. And then, um, so we're going to have these different stations set up of different things that, that are going on that are all brand new, never been talked about before. I mean, they pretty much just got devices not too long ago. And so this is all just a, an explosion of some newness and some a lot of learning curve. So we'll move forward and there's a lot to move forward with but we're, try we're trying to go from consumers to producers, of course, and just getting the concept of giving our students a chance to play and create. Um, but I just wanted to end with um, something that we're doing, and I would love for everybody to be a part of. We're having this in May, and it is Global Maker Day. And we're hoping that um, people will just get, it will just be an inspiration for classrooms to get together and just play and have a blast. We want to have challenges going. It's going to be eight hours long. We're trying to find presenters right now to come in per group. We have four different categories going on. We have entrepreneurs, uh, global problem solvers, recreators, and uh, designers. So out of those four groups, and uh, we would like to have different um, presenters coming in, just like we are right now, sharing some of the amazing things that they're doing. So if you're interested, I'd love for you guys to join, as well as the links have been posted on the events page, if that's something that you want to participate in. Um, one other cool thing that we want to have going on there is a virtual vendor hall. And this is going to be where our vendors can come in and share resources. So classes are looking for things to incorporate in their classroom, and they might want to have a place to chat. So we're going to have live chat going those eight hours with these vendors that will be sharing a short little five-minute video to get a little bit more about their product. And then if you have more conversation that you want to have, you're able to chat with them and kind of connect and ask more questions. But we'll have that going during the eight hours too, just to give some resources and ideas 
ideas and spark some interest as far as people coming in brand new as well as some newer things out there maybe that they've, they've already been um, um, you know what we are in the process of getting our forms together right now Travis for our vendors um, and that is a great question but right now they can register and then just connect with us um, through our website which is all linked on the events page so if there's any other yeah block souls I, yeah that's the we've been kind of connecting with them as I mean there's just so many amazing things that people are doing and incorporating and really for me it's more about just giving the kids a chance to spend a day creating just having this about them and giving them the chance because there's so many classes that aren't doing this so many teachers that don't know about this so this is kind of getting that spark out there and hopefully exciting some some classrooms to do something different that their kids are really designing and developing so um, we are at one o'clock does anybody have anything else to add that you guys wanted to state before we head out All right, thank you guys all for joining, and we will be, um, I know Carrie's the one that's really the brains behind all of this. She puts together all these resources and pulls them together on our Google Plus community, so make sure to request to join in so you guys can see future weeks and some of the topics we're discussing, and thank you for uh, joining in, Judy and Travis and Fran's teacher that she brought in, um, and thank you guys for joining in and being a part of this, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.